Thank you for watching this video, Deregulated Power. I am Rafael Hertzberg, Managing Director for Interact Limited, an energy consulting company based in Sao Paulo, Brazil. The agenda will cover deregulated power market potential in Brazil, the comparison between regulated and deregulated contracts, and starting right now. About 30% of Brazil's power consumption is already deregulated. The big industrial energy users migrated about 10 years ago. The medium-sized companies and institutions are migrating since the beginning of this decade. And there is a substantial balance of 15,000 companies and institutions that are still regulated and are potentially deregulated energy users. What are the similarities and the differences between regulated and deregulated in Brazil? It's about the same supply chain, the same physical grids, and the same associated risks, and even the same local utility companies. The most important differences are Deregulated contracts are established between the client and the power trader. And when it comes to the regulated energy user, these guys contract directly the energy from the local utility company. What are the most important differences when it comes to these two different animals? The regulated market is about rates. It means that the regulator, Anil, in Brazil's case, sets the rates for each year and the escalation along the years. Power is the variable cost. It means that the end user pays only the amount of power that was consumed in a given month. So it's basically a very simple and easy uh, business environment. In the deregulated market, prices are negotiated between sellers and buyers. Basically, it's a take or pay arrangement by which the energy user is contracting a fixed volume. Therefore, there is uh, every month a settlement. So the difference of the excess or the lack of energy is traded in the clearinghouse. And of course, there is an important issue at stake, management. Two very important aspects are involved when one is considering the regulated versus deregulated markets. The regulated market is about future rates. What kind of rates will be there in the future? And the deregulated market is about deregulated prices for future delivery. We are always looking at the future. These are references for this week of July 25. We have two sets of data here. The marginal cost of operations, which in our case ranges from 51 to 116 reais, depending on the geographical location considered, and the marginal cost of expansion, which ranges from 193 reais per megawatt hour to 299. The marginal cost of operations is a strong signal for the short term, while the marginal cost of expansion is a strong signal for future prices because it's about the cost of one additional unit of megawatt hour to be produced out of new power plants to be built. So regulated rates and future power prices tend to the marginal cost of expansion. If one is considering the possibility of migrating to the deregulated markets, there are at least 
three very important strategic decisions. The first one is what would you expect when it comes to rates against deregulated prices for the future? Second, are you prepared for a long-term commitment or not? And third, is your team ready to go for this additional management commitment? There are at least three very important aspects of a decision-making process involving a migration to the deregulated market. First, do the officers have already established the preconditions to migrate? Second, have the managers gone to the market to get offers, firm offers regarding deregulated power prices and conditions? Third, are the officers ready to decide? According to my experience, a very important question is how to deal with the unknown? And this question is raised as if I were a client. There are three recommendations. First is looking at this opportunity within a strategic eye. What are the advantages, disadvantages, and associated risks? The second recommendation is bringing an experienced and independent consulting to the team. This is very important to produce value, since as we consider that this might be the first time that this client is considering this migration possibility, having knowledge is very important. And the third recommendation is about the decision-making process. A teamwork is a lot better than working alone. So if we join forces, a lot more should be achieved. If you would like to talk about this possibility here in Brazil, make sure to get in touch with me. And here goes my mobile, Twitter, Skype, and email information. And I am looking forward to hearing from you.